Good day students. In this clip, we're going to be going over an example on how to find the area between two curves. All right, so let's go ahead and write down the question. Uh, so number one, we are to find the area um, of the region enclosed by enclosed by um, the functions y equals 5 minus x squared and y equals x minus 1. All right, so we want to find the area of the region enclosed by these two functions. Now, are we going to use um, horizontal or vertical rectangles to evaluate um, the area in between the two functions? In order to answer that question, we are going to, first of all, sketch the graph of the situation. One giveaway that indicates that we're going to be integrating in terms of x is if you inspect these two functions, they're functions in terms of x, okay? So that's a giveaway that we're going to be integrating along the x-axis in the horizontal direction. All right, so let's go ahead and sketch the graph first. Now, to help us determine the limits of integration and the um, domain, of our graph, we're going to find the intersections first, okay? So let's find um, two points that are on these two graphs. We know that this is a parabola and this is um, a straight line. So let's go ahead and find uh, points of intersections first. So find points of intersection. So to do that, we'll simply set these two equations equal to each other. So we have 5 minus x squared equals x minus 1. All right, now let's go ahead and solve for um, the x values that satisfy these quadratic equations. So let's put it in standard form, set it equal to 0. If we add x squared and 5 and subtract 5 from both sides, we'll have negative, actually it's going to be x squared x squared plus x minus 1 minus 5, all right, equals 0. And if we simplify this by combining like terms, we have x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. Now let's uh, factor this. Um, let's use the x game to factor this. Think about uh, two numbers that multiply to give us um, negative 6 and add to give us positive 1, all right? So it's going to be 2 and 3, a variation of 2 and 3. You know that for the product to be negative and the sum positive, the smaller number has to be negative, all right? So we have x minus 2 and x plus 3 equals 0. So the x values that satisfy um, this quadratic equation are x equals positive 2 and negative 3. So you basically use a zero product property to set these two factors to zero and then you solve and then you have 2 and negative 3. All right, so we have an idea as to what the domain of our graph will look like. So let's go ahead and set up our coordinate system, my y-axis and my x-axis. Um, we have 1, 2 to the right, 2, and then 1, two, three, to the left, negative three. All right, now let's uh, go ahead and sketch the curve. So the first one is y equals x minus one. So graph, let's graph um, y equals x minus one. So this is a line, we just need the slope and the y-intercept to graph it. So the slope is one over one. We're gonna rise one and run one, starting from the y-intercept of negative one. So we start from negative 1, <clears throat> we're going to rise 1 and run 1, takes us to this point, rise 1, run 1, putting some more points. All right, so there goes your line, putting more points. Okay, so um, we can draw the first function, which is a linear function, y equals x minus 1. All right, so... Let's go ahead and label that. This is, it's gonna call it the blue function. So this is um, 
y equals x minus 1. All right, next thing we want to graph is the uh, parabola of the quadratic function. So now we're going to graph um, y equals 5 minus x squared. Now, uh, where's the vertex of this parabola right here? We can write this in um, vertex form. So it's y equals negative x minus 0 squared plus 5. So we can see that the vertex is at 0 comma positive 5. That's where the vertex is. Let's write that down. So the vertex is going to be at um, 0, 5. Okay, and if you think about translation, this minus basically means that the parabola is reflected downwards, and then this plus 5 means it's shifted 5 units upwards. There's no shifts all left or right, okay? So um, we're going to have 0, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There goes the vertex, and I know that um, the function goes through this point right here goes through x equals 2, and it also goes through x equals negative 3, as we determined in this point of intersection right here. So our parabola looks something like this. If you want to find the um, x-intercepts, what we'll simply do is uh, set, um, you set the function equal to 0. Okay, so for the x-intercept, we're going to uh, set 5 minus x squared equals 0. And when you solve this, you're going to have x equals plus or minus the square root of 5, which is approximately plus or minus 2.23. All right, so these are just points to help us sketch the graph. It's not real, really significant. So um, a point is going to be somewhere here, and another point is going to be somewhere here. Okay, now let's go ahead and sketch our parabola. Probably is going to look something like this to the best of my ability through that point right there. And then the other uh, piece symmetric to that through there, like that. Okay, so this is the other function um, y equals 5 minus x squared. Now, how are we going to set up our rectangle? Is it going to be top, bottom? or left right. Now if you look at the orientation of the two functions, that should basically tell you how to orient your rectangle. So how do these functions look? Are they on top one on top and one on the bottom or one to the left and one to the right? We can clearly see that this is a top down orientation. Alright? So since we have a top down orientation, let me go ahead and put in my rectangle that shows us how we're going to slice um, this function. So there goes my rectangle right there. This little slice is, um, has a width along the x-axis. So this, the length of this little rectangle right here is dx. Okay? The limits of our integration are going to be going from left to right, whereas the function will be top and bottom. Okay? So in this case, we're going to have um, the integral set it up like this. So the area enclosed by these two functions, what we're looking for is this entire area here bounded by these two functions. So it's going to be the integral of x from the left, the left intersection, the x value from the x on the right. Those are our limits of integration. x from the left, that's going to be negative 3 to x to the right, which is 2 of f of x on the top. So whichever function is on top, in this case, it's the green one, y equals 5 minus x squared minus the function on the bottom, um, bottom dx. Okay? So you notice how all our variables are consistent. We have x, 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 x. Okay, if we were doing a side-to-side -side orientation, we should have y, 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 y. All right, so that's that's a giveaway right there. So this is how we're going to um, evaluate the area enclosed by these two functions. All right. Okay, so let me, let's just um, indicate it right here, so you don't get confused. This right here is 
f of x on the, that's on the top and then this function right here is um, f of x bottom okay all right so let's go ahead and apply this um, setup to this problem so the area is going to become the integral remember we're looking at the x's from negative 3 to 2 negative 3 to 2 of the function on top is y equals x minus 1 so it's going to be um, no, the one on top is 5 minus x squared. So 5 minus x squared minus the function on the bottom, which is x minus 1, okay, um, dx. So this is top and this is bottom. Don't forget to group your bottom function in parentheses because this minus is going to alter the sign, all right? So there we have our integral set up. So let's go ahead and simplify this integrand and then evaluate this using FTC2, okay? So we have the integral from negative 3 to 2 of negative x squared minus x uh, plus 1 plus 5 dx, okay? So now let's simplify further. We have the integral of negative 3 to 2 of negative x squared minus x plus 6 dx. Now let's go ahead and do term by term integration. We're going to apply the power rule to every single term since they're all powers. Um, so let's go ahead and do it. We're going to have x to the third over 3. Let's not forget the negative. Minus x squared over 2 plus 6x. This will be evaluated from negative 3 to 2. So using FTC part two, we're going to plug in the upper limit first. So we have negative two to the third over three minus two to the second power over two plus six times two minus, uh, now we'll plug in the lower limit of integration into the x's. So we have negative, negative three to the third over two minus negative three square over two plus six times negative three. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, simplify. I'll just basically use an order of operations here. So we're going to have, uh, this is negative eight over three minus four over Two. Let's not reduce because we're going to have to find the LCD plus 12. And then let's see what happens here. This becomes negative times minus. That's a plus times another minus. That makes it a minus. 3 to the third is 27 over uh, 2. And this minus times that makes this a plus. 3 to the second power is 9. 9 over 2. Okay, I switched up the denominators a little bit here. So this over is two, this is over three. And that's over three. All right, so we have three here and two there. What about that? And this is a three, that's a two, okay. And then negative six times, negative three times six is negative 18. And then this minus makes it a plus, plus 18. Put it over one. Over one, the LCD here is six so we want to make all the denominators six we multiply this by two we have negative 16 and then this by three minus 12 and then this will multiply by six plus 72 and then this will multiply by two minus 54 plus nine times three 27 plus 18 times six uh, 108 okay so if you, all this is all divided by six since we have the LCD now at six. Um, and then if you compute this sum, you're going to get uh, 125 over six square units. It represents an area, okay? So this is the value of the area enclosed by um, the two functions um, in the problem.
So let's take a look at the visualization of this problem. All right, so in this setup, um, we're looking for the area between uh, f of x and uh, g of x. So let's have the um, computer program generate a graph for us. So we have the upper function, which is the parabola, and then the lower function as the linear function. Limits of integration are going left to right, as indicated here. Okay, so let's make that a bit smaller. All right, so um, let's see here. So what we want to find is the area between the two curves. So let's show you a visualization as to how it looks like. So there you have the area right there between the two curves. Okay, so that's what we're looking at, the area between the two curves. And the numerical approximation of our answer, see what that is? The answer is basically... Um, let's do the whole thing. So the answer is 20.833 in decimal form. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over how to do this problem using our calculators. So I'm going to be using the TI-89 titanium to evaluate this integral. So let's go ahead and um, enter the expression we evaluated. Um, so we have the integral of um, the upper function, which is 5 minus x squared, minus, don't forget the parenthesis, the inner function, which was the lower function, sorry, the lower function, which is x minus 1 the variable or independent variable variable of integration is x the lower bound um, is negative 3 and then our upper bound is positive 2 like that enter we have 125 over 6 and I believe that's what we got before if we do the if we do the approximation diamond enter we get the numerical result, which is consistent with um, what the computer generated here. So we can clearly see that um, our answer um, is in fact correct, okay? So that's that. 